Hey, welcome to this video. What I'm going to show today is something that I didn't invent myself. Uh, certainly not that clever, but I was asked uh, in a project that I'm currently doing to create some speedo charts. And I hadn't done it for a couple of years, so I went online and found a couple of good tutorials. I'm going to share that with you today. So here we are. We've got three dials. They've each got four bands. Um, for simplicity's sake, I've just colored them green, orange, and red. And at the moment, they're just manually edited by typing different numbers in this box. But obviously, what you do is connect those data points um, through to a, a big data range so that you could choose a day and, and something like this could be modifying for you. So let's have a crack at this. Almost starting from scratch, what I want to do is this time a five color band. That way it can coincide with a, a five scale question, for example, uh, stress, fatigue, soreness, and so on. So, um, what is important is that this number here, this total, both on the, the banding and the data pointer series, which we'll get to in a second. What's very important is that those add up to uh, 360. 360 isn't a magic number. It just makes it quite easy to visualize the size of each of the bands. Ultimately, the graph will just do a proportion. So if everything added up to 200, it would still look the same. It's just a little bit easier to adjust when you're dealing with a number which is familiar. So I'm going to choose 40 for each of the bands and that sums up to 200 so I need a 160 blank so that it adds up to 360. Selecting everything except the total I want to insert a donut chart. Now what it does by default is it includes the first segment at uh, top dead center 12 o'clock so I just need to rotate that around so right click on the series format data series and this rotation slider can be dragged around now I did this earlier and if I recall correctly 260 degrees has uh, it lined up how I would like it so that's already looking quite good now first thing, <coughs> next thing, sorry, that I would like to do is go around and change the colors to what I want. Now that first change is probably the most significant one. That is making the bottom section, the one that says blank, uh, making it blank so you can't see it. So this is still there, but for aesthetics or for looks, it doesn't uh, clog it up. So. I'm going to make this a relatively simple green to red scale by selecting a single point and working my way around. Uh, an orange of some description. So, you know, just stereotypical colors here. I found it actually quite difficult to. Um, to do these colors in a way that I felt happy with. Um, you may end up uh, wanting to blend the colors much more subtly and therefore maybe have 20 or 30 color bands and just use shades of, uh, of uh, red to green but um, that's something that you might do if you really wanted to have this be a, a key feature of your report. For me I wasn't too worried. I actually think having a single color such as dark blue to light blue might actually work better because the uh, changes aren't quite so harsh. So we've got the first part sorted. Now you might like to say um, things like this. So that you've got a chart, but um, and you can delete that single part off your series. Um, this could be useful. I I think that ultimately what you're finding with these kinds of things is that the person that's looking knows what 
uh, one to five means, but uh, certainly uh, it completes it up nicely having uh, a legend such as this. All right, next thing that we want to do is put the pointer on. And now this is slightly different how it works, but I'll just walk through it. We need to have a pointer. I'm going to choose five points. Similar to last time, I want to have the sum of these things equal 360. So, um, so that it can overlay the previous data series. As I mentioned previously, if this total was 200, then you want this total to be 200 also. Uh, it just makes it easier to line up. So, let's say I've got my data series, it's a thousand rows, and I'm taking an average of that. Let's say it's stress. And on the scale that we were looking at, right up to 5, I'm going to say it's a 3.7. So what I want to do is have that number drive where the pointer is. And so if it's a five point scale, we know that 3.7 is a reasonable way, you know, 70 something percent down that continuum. So we've got a five point scale, and I'll do the numbers just down here actually. So I'm just going to type the formula out here. So if this is our number, and we know it's on a five point scale, we need to divide it by five. Because that tells us the answer is 74% along the continuum between the start and the end. So if I use that information to drive a number for me, that's very useful. So I know that the pre needs to be 148. And I'll explain what's happening there in just a second. I also know that I want it to have the same blank period, 160. And so all I really need to do is say sum of 1, 2, and three and go 360 minus that. I did that in a slightly convoluted way, sorry about that. But if I, for example, drew a chart, that's what it's telling us. Put this down here. So what we're going to do is have this red part be the pointer and everything else disappear. So let's go about that now. I'm going to delete the chart. And add the series on top of this one. So click add our series values are here. Okay. Okay, so what it's done is it's automatically laid a new layer or a new ring around the outside of the first one. Now, that's okay for now, but what I actually want to do is convert this series, click on it and say change series chart type. This is what you do whenever you have a mixed type of chart, such as a bar with a line running over the top of it. I want to convert this to a pie. Now pies are um, have got a pretty bad reputation as being a bit useless and I tend not to use them a lot but in this case it's quite a neat way to accomplish what we're looking for. So our pie is on the inside. When I click on the chart it's easy to click the wrong series. I know I've got the right series because it's, the data is being highlighted in this blue box here. So I am going to format the data series in the same way that I did previously. Firstly, rotating it. And secondly, I want to go through each data point and make it blank. The only one that we want to have 
is the pointer. It's really easy to get this bit wrong. But so far so good. Now the last bit, I just want to be able to have it be black. There we go. <clears throat> now so we're nearly there. What I finally want to do is click on our Pi again. Once again, making sure you've got the right series selected. Format Data Series, Secondary Axis. What that does is just brings the black line in front. I'm going to delete that legend. Um, our other legend disappeared. I'm not sure what happened to that, but let's not worry about that. We can easily add it in if we wanted to later. So we're looking good now. If I change this number, it changes for us. So things are going well. What I will find is that um, because I've actually got data under here, there's not a lot I can do underneath it unless I insert something such as a text box. So I'm going to do that because I think um, it'd be good to have some kind of label in here. Just going to blow that up. I tend not to, in, I tend not to like um, borders around the outside. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to insert one more underneath it here. And with the box selected, I click up in the formula bar, type equals, and click on our value here. And so now that will be dynamic also bold it, centralize it, and let's put just some token color on there to make it stick out. Alright, so if I wanted to, firstly, sorry, before I get further down the track, I'm just going to group all of that together, because that allows me to move it as a unit. So if I wanted to, let's say um, I had a second series. I'm going to copy all of that across. Just going to drag a few of these formulas around and see what I get. That looks all right. So now, if I copy this whole thing, I can move it over the top. I hope. That's better. So we're getting uh, some progress here. All right, that's better. So we've got some of these things happening now. A little bit of fiddling around and we can um, solve sort of some of the layout issues and things like that. But ultimately what we want is for that one to say fatigue, for this text box to be linked to G18, 
and for this pi to be linked to that data series. And that should be enough. I think I've done everything I need to to make that update. And so aside from um, a bit of formatting, which I'll just take away now, here we go. We've got a couple of pointers that are you know, reasonably interesting for people to look at and can play a little bit of a role in a dashboard. So um, that was a little bit rough, sorry. I was making it up as I went along, but uh, nevertheless, a little trick that you might like to try. Just going to flash up a link to a couple of people that have uh, got dashboard um, parts such as these either for sale or demo and you can check them out as well if you wanted to. 